everyone, thanks for joining me again. This video is going to be a case study on my newest completed corset, which I call the Sebastian Corset. And the name I will explain a little bit later on, but right now I'm just going to show you it from all angles. So here's the front, the side, the back, and the other side. So this is actually a pattern that I modified from an Edwardian inspired corset. So as you can see, it has the flat front here, but it doesn't give you that same S curve, that, uh, that arching in your back like a true Edwardian corset would. This is a long line corset, as you can see, it goes quite low over my hips. However, it's cut right above the uh, thigh area so that I can st still sit down nicely. It won't cut into my lap. Um, it's about 13 and a half inches long in the center front, and the waist reduction is 22 inches closed. So right now I'm wearing it at about 23 inches. And if you'd like to see more detailed pictures of this corset, I put them up on my Facebook page, so I'll put the address right here. And if you follow me on Facebook, then you'll get to see progress pictures of all my projects that I'm working on as I'm working on them. So you'll get to see the construction process, you get to ask me questions about them, um, what I plan to do in the future, so check it out. All right, so here's a corset laid out flat. You can see that when it's laid out flat, it has a few of these wrinkles along the waistline, but as you just saw before, when it's on a body, those wrinkles don't show up. So the material, starting with the material, is three layers. The outside is this red satin with black undertones, and that's fused to herringbone coutil. I used stitch witchery. Um, it was recommended that I tried Wonder Under, however, stitch witchery was a lot less expensive. <laughs> so I just used that, and even though it doesn't have a paper backing, I found that the fusing process was fine, and um, it worked rather well. It, uh, it did, didn't give me too many wrinkles or any problems or anything, so that's good. Um, so yes, it was fused to a herringbone coutil, which is the interlining, and the inside lining. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Ah, it's Ariel! Yay! <laughs> so that's why I call this the Sebastian corset, because my brother came into the room as I was just finishing up this corset, and he said, oh, it's a little mermaid corset, and um, the outside looks crustacean red. It looks like a cooked crustacean. So I wasn't really planning it that way, but I really like how it turned out. So I named this the Sebastian corset after Sebastian the Crab. So here's a close-up of the lining, and you can see I centered Ariel in the middle of the panels. You can see here, so I really like how that turned out. There are three on this side, and then on the other side, there are another two right there. What I rather didn't like about this lining was that it was a very thin quilting cotton, so what I probably should have done was interface this cotton um, or not made it a floating panel because I found that it tended to stretch and warp a lot as I was sewing it. So moving on to the construction, I did faux flat fell seams, so basically they were just top stitched, and I find that to be very strong. It's starting to be my favorite method of construction. And like I said before, on the inside, it's just a floating liner which is attached at the first and the last panels right there. There's also a one inch wide waist tape running through the entire width of the corset hidden between the different layers. And I can see a little bit of this in an outline beneath the satin. And um, I don't really mind that, but if some people do mind that, then basically all they have to do is stop the waist tape at the seam between the first and second channel so that it doesn't go over the bones or the busk. And the bias tape is made out of the same red satin cut on the bias and it is machine stitched on the outside and then here on the inside it was hand stitched invisibly. And I spent a lot of time matching it up here at the top and the bottom, both in the front and the back, and I rather like how it turned out. These external boning channels here, they are functional boning channels, so they actually have the bones inside of these. I made them out of um, basically sewing coutil into tubes and then covering them with the same colored red satin and stitching it down. I was a little experimental in this case. I um, used the same satin as on the panels, but I cut the satin across the grain for the channels instead of on the grain like I did for the for the panels here. So it gives them a different kind of reflection depending on the angle that you're looking at the corset. So in bright light, looking at the corset head on, as you see here, then um, it all looks like the, you know the same material, the same color, it looks very congruent. 
However, if you look at it with light on an angle, the channels almost seem to glow against the rest of the corset, and I'm not sure if you'd be able to see it here. Um, I will put a picture. And you can see here that the boning channels have contrast stitching. I stitched them with black thread to match the other black accents in the corset, like the black busk and also the black ribbon and grommets. I was going to floss this corset with black thread, but I thought this probably had too few bones and the flossing would have looked more random as opposed to uh, congruent. On the inside here, you'll see a floating modesty panel. It's uh, suspended on the laces with grommets, made from the same red satin and lined with a heavy twill. It's about five and a half inches wide and stiffened with plastic canvas, which despite not being as versatile as steel boning, I find it much more comfortable in my opinion, and it's also much faster and easier to make. The busk here is 12 and a half inches long and like I said before it's black so it was so fun to work with. It's covered in a matte black kind of powder which is then fused to the metal. It's a little bit thinner than uh, the standard flexible busk so it's a little bit less than half an inch wide on either side. However, um, it is also a little less flexible than your standard busk because of the coating on it. Nevertheless, I still reinforce the front here with two more half inch wide steel flats on either side of the busk. For the boning, there are 16 bones total in this corset, so there are five quarter inch wide spiral steel bones in the external boning channels on each side of the corset, so that's 10 of those, and then uh, there are another six half inch wide steel flats, so there's one on either side of the busk, and then of course another two on either side of the grommets, both on each side. And speaking of grommets, there are 30 two-part size zero grommets, 15 on each side for this corset, and they're also coated in black. I bought this at a leather crafting store, and I was actually pretty lucky that they were the exact same size and shape as uh, the ones in my setter, so they were really easy to install. I like how wide the lip of these grommets are, and also on the other side, how wide the washers are right here, um, because it makes it feel very sturdy, especially when I use fray stop on the material before I set it. And the laces here are 3 8 7 inch wide, so just under half an inch wide, and it's double faced satin ribbon, so it is quite sturdy here. Um, obviously black to match the other accents of the corset. Now in retrospect, I would probably have gotten um, half inch wide or even one inch wide satin because I feel that would probably have been sturdier. And that's all for this case study. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.